Hungary is like a low calorie version of Russia. Do they have corruption? Yes, but it doesn't quite reach the level of Russia. Is that an authoritarian government? Yes, increasingly so. But they do not go quite as far as poisoning political opponents with Novichok. It is still a country in the European Union, which is to say, with the most basic democratic guarantees. The president of Hungary is this man you see on the screen, Viktor Orban, Putin's main ally in Europe. We could say that Orban is like the annoying little brother of Brussels. Authoritarian, ultra-conservative, and pro-Putin. What a combo. And I know what many of you are thinking. This video isn't going to be a pointless criticism of Orban, is it? For some reason, we get a lot of comments accusing us of being funded by George Soros. As everybody knows, Orban is Soros's arch enemy. So it's crystal clear. Surely this video is funded by Soros so that we show the shamefulness of the Hungarian president. Right? Right? Side note, have you ever wondered why George Soros is so well known? We'll tell you at the end of this video. And I am sorry to disappoint you, but in today's video, we're not going to insult Orban very much. Let's focus on the other side of Hungary. What are we talking about? We're talking about this. Viktor Orban wins fourth consecutive term as Hungary's prime minister. That's right, four consecutive electoral victories. Viktor Orban has been in power for more than 12 years, and every time he goes to the polls, he sweeps the floor. These latest elections, those of 2022, have merit. In this case, almost all the political parties joined together in a coalition to try to defeat him. Not only has he won, he has won by an absolute majority again. In other words, if you want to win elections, get an Orban in your life. And yes, you did hear correctly, he won the elections. As we have said before, Hungary is like Russia but low in calories. This means the elections are relatively free. True, Orban's party, the Fidesz, has done some minor cheating. But you have to recognise reality for what it is. Orban doesn't need to make up the data. He is really popular in his country. The question is, why? What is the secret behind Viktor Orban's success? Is there a lesson we can learn from Hungary? And why is George Soros so well known around the world? Today we're going to answer all of these questions, but first, do you know how you can actively support all of us here at Visual Politic? By joining our Patreon community. Not only will you be contributing to keeping Visual Politic going, and you will also have access to merchandising such as this t-shirt I'm wearing. It's not for sale. The only way to get it is by being part of our community. And that's not all. We also have a weekly bulletin, the Weekly Snapshot, where we cover topics that we don't have time to cover in the form of videos. As well as that, we are also uploading exclusive content for our patrons. For example, we're about to publish another video about Hungary and George Soros where we delve into topics that we did not have time to cover in this one. So, you know, if you don't want to miss it, I'll be waiting for you in the Visual Politic community on Patreon. And now, let's take a look at some history. It's the economy, stupid. Are you familiar with a software called Archie CAD? If you work in anything related to architecture, surely you must have used it at some point. It is one of the major pieces of software. Well, it is made in Hungary. With this example, you can get an idea of the Hungarian economy and its potential. They have an important IT sector, an important pharmaceutical sector, and quite a lot of industry. In other words, it's not a wealthy country like Germany or Sweden, but it is one of the most successful post-communist economies, almost at the level of Poland or the Czech Republic. However, when Orban came to power, the situation was very different. Hungary was going through a huge economic crisis. It was 2010, and Hungary was one of the countries most affected by the great financial crisis. They had 11% unemployment, the highest rate in Europe along with Spain, and 7% public deficit, a figure well above the requirements demanded by Europe. It seemed Orban had his work cut out for him. And what was his formula for saving the economy? Well, we could say that Orban did the opposite of what any centre-left government would do. Let's say it clearly. Orban is ultra-nationalist and does not like people who come from abroad. But when it comes to money, the tune changes completely. Basically, Orban's strategy has two pillars, reducing the public spending and rolling out the red carpet for foreign capital. And in this respect, Hungary is a success story. Take a look at this graph. look closely, you will see that Hungary is able to attract more money from abroad than other countries like Germany or Poland. Almost 75% of the industrial investment in this country comes from abroad. And after Orban came to power, this country has seen its highest peaks. The question is, why? What does Hungary have that other countries don't have? Well, the first answer is low taxes. If we think of countries with low taxes, Ireland and Luxembourg come to mind. But the truth is that Hungary has the lowest corporate tax rate in Europe. Here's a map. 
Since 2017, Hungarian companies pay a basic 9% corporate income tax. On top of this must be added all kinds of subsidy programs and tax deductions. For example, if a company reinvests its profits in Hungarian startups, it can save up to 80% in taxes. If we add to this the fact that Hungary has a well-trained workforce and relatively cheap wages, it's easy to understand why this country just keeps attracting money from abroad. To give you an idea, they are number two for countries in the entire European Union for attracting investment from South Korea. This does not mean that South Korea is the main investor in Hungary, far from it, but it serves as an example to see how companies from countries as remote as South Korea bet on Hungary much more than on other countries. Put it another way, Viktor Orban may be the black sheep of the European family, but the results of his policies are not that bad. Yes, it's true, Orban may be the man who would make Greta Thunberg cry, but when companies that manufacture electric cars choose a destination for their factories, they prefer Hungary over many other countries. That's right. As of 2021, Hungary is putting itself at the forefront of the electric vehicle industry, at least in Europe. Check this out. SK innovation to build third battery plant in Hungary. BMW to build 1 billion euro electric car factory in Hungary. Mercedes-Benz will launch series production of a purely electric vehicle in Hungary. And I know what some of you are thinking. Well, Hungary may be a paradise for companies, but does all this money really reach the pockets of ordinary Hungarians? Well, here the data speaks for itself. Let me give you a comparison. In 2010, Spain had an unemployment rate of 19%, whilst Hungary's was at 11%. 10 years later, in 2020, Spain was at 15%, while Hungary was just above 4%. All this economic growth has translated into more money for the state and healthier accounts. And what has this money been spent on? How do Orban's social policies work? Well, we're going to look at that right now. Family Values Here, I know what many of you are thinking. Viktor Orban is nothing but a right-wing populist. His entire economic policy can be summed up in lowering taxes, and by doing that, anyone could keep the citizens happy. Well, the truth is, he's actually not just a populist. In fact, if we had to define Hungary's tax policy in any way, it would be anti-populism. Yes, it's true, companies pay lower taxes than in any European country, but remember that companies do not vote. In this country, almost all the tax burden falls on the average citizen. How? With the most unpopular tax that exists, VAT and indirect taxes. Yes, Hungary has the lowest corporate taxes in Europe, but as far as indirect taxes are concerned, it's the opposite. 27%. I'm not joking. While most European countries have a 21% tax rate, Hungary has a whopping 27%. You may criticize this policy, but we certainly cannot say that it's an attempt to buy voters. Quite the contrary. And the question is, where does all this money that is collected go? What social policies are there in Hungary? Well, this is where we could talk about a kind of conservative social democracy. This is where Orban shows his most traditional side, because almost all social policies are oriented towards one single goal, having more children. Yeah. That's right. The pension crisis is a problem all over Europe, Hungary included, and Orban's recipe for avoiding democratic decline is based on trying, by all means possible, to get Hungarians to start having children. For example, since 2012, families with four or more children do not pay income tax. That's right, just like that, 0% income tax. And not only that, within the couple, the mother who has given birth to four children is tax-free for life. And what about families that do not have four children? Well, for example, families with between three and four children who buy a van can get a subsidy of around $7,000. In other words, Orban's policy is extremely social. Yes, it is true there are social benefits conditional on having children, but it is assistance that does reach the vast majority of Hungarians. And don't think we're talking about small changes here. In 2019, the so-called family protection programs came to account for 4.8% of the entire Hungarian GDP. And the question you're probably all wondering now is, are these policies working? Is Hungary really succeeding in ending the demographic black hole? Well, the answer is a clear and resounding no. Take a look at this graph. Here you can see how the fertility rate in Hungary remains about the same with or without birth control policies. Hungarian women have an average of 1.6 children, though I assume Hungarians as a whole are having quite a lot of fun. In other words, the Hungarian population is still decreasing. Now that's good. When it comes to reducing inequality, Orban is a genius. Take a look at this other graph. Here you can see how the gap between rich and poor is much more gentle in Hungary than in France or Germany. This is not praise for Orban, by the way. Far from it. You know how little we like his authoritarian way, his lack of respect for media freedom, his attacks on judicial independence, or his behaviour during the Ukrainian war. But this is one of the least known and least talked about facets of Hungarian politics. 
Yes, it's true, you will never see Orban at a gay pride parade. His rhetoric is far from what would be understood as social policy in any other country. But no one can deny that his government is doing its best to help the most disadvantaged families. And that shows in the elections. And now I know what some of you are thinking. Now visual politic is putting Orban on a pedestal. This is just like the conspiracy before, but the other way around. Could it be that the Hungarian government is paying them under the table? Don't panic. Now we're going to talk about the other side of Orban, the one that neither the Hungarian media nor the mainstream media are mentioning. Check this out. The man who created George Soros. George Soros is something like the Elvis Presley of conspiracies. There's no conspiracy theory where Soros doesn't appear somewhere. Probably all of you watching this video have heard him mentioned at some point. The question is, why is he so famous? Let me explain. George Soros is a billionaire with a lot of political clout. Yes, that's true, but he is neither the richest person in the world nor the most influential. So why does everyone know Soros and not, for example, the Koch brothers? The answer lies in Viktor Orban, or rather in the political strategist who created the myth of Viktor Orban. But what does this good man have to do with Orban or Soros? Well, you will see. Orban's political career has two strength stages. From 1998 to 2002, Viktor Orban was Prime Minister of Hungary. In this case, we would define him as pro-free market, but also socially minded politician. However, in 2012, he lost the elections. For eight years, he was in the opposition, and that's when he hired the services of Arthur Finkelstein. Arthur Finkelstein was a political communication consultant from the United States. Or rather, we could say that Arthur Finkelstein, Karl Rove and Lee Atwater are like the Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. of political consulting. True geniuses in the art of winning elections. <laughs> Well, it was Finkelstein who drew the new image of Orban, a man of the people who spends his weekends in the countrysides and drinks palinka. But as those of you who have been following visual politics for a long time already know, to create a hero in politics, you have to create a villain. And who is the perfect villain for Orban? None other than George Soros. Although he is not the richest investor in the world by far, he was born in Hungary. And perhaps he is the richest Hungarian in the world. And hatred against millionaires is an electoral weapon as old as impossible promises. Add to this the fact that he has always been critical of Orban and that he is Jewish, which stirs the anti-Semitic fervor of Hungarians. In other words, Soros was the perfect villain. And that explains statements like this one. In speech, Hungary's Orban attacks enemy who speculates with money. Orban, Europe must not succumb to Soros network. Yikes! By the way, if you want to understand more about the whole story of who George Soros is and how the myth was created, we will very soon release an exclusive video on Patreon where we discuss this topic in depth. So now you have one more reason to join our community on Patreon. But let's get back to our story because there is another ace that Orban has up his sleeve, another special weapon for winning elections. Outside Hungary, there are more than 2.4 million ethnic Hungarians. That is, in Romania, Slovakia and Slovenia, there are many Hungarian-speaking communities. For years, Orban has been giving them passports so they can vote in elections. And all of them, overwhelmingly, vote for Orban's party, the Fidesz. And you will say, is this electoral manipulation? Yes and no. But nobody can deny that Orban knows his voters very well. For example, at a time when everyone seems to be very aware of the war in Ukraine, Orban has managed to make a move that is as risky as it is accurate. Breaking ranks with EU, Hungary ready to pay for Russian gas in rubles. Exactly. Hungary is the EU country closest to Putin's Russia. From an ethical point of view, it's a real disgrace. But in Hungary, the average voter has voted with his pocket. And Orban's closeness to Putin translates into cheaper gas and oil than in any other European country, at least in the short term. But what could happen in the long term? Well, this is where the big problem of Orbanomics comes in. For years, Budapest has been pushing the boundaries with Brussels, and its stance on the Ukraine war could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Could the European Union sanction Hungary. Let's take another look at another chart. If you look at the year 2004, there is a substantial jump in the amount of money coming into Hungary. So what happened in 2004? Exactly, Hungary joined the European Union. Companies from the rest of Europe are the main investors in Hungary. In other words, Orban's political and economic success is tied to the European Union. The question is, what could happen if the investment tap is suddenly cut off? To what extent could Hungary's stance on the Ukrainian war be the beginning of the end for the Orban era? You can leave me your answers in the comments below. As always, don't forget that here on Visual Politic, we release new videos every week. So subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell button down there so you don't miss any of our updates. Remember that we also have exclusive content, a newsletter and merchandising in our Patreon community. If you like this video, please like it so we know and I'll see you next time.